Hi everyone! It is time to return to the Great Covers series and this time I am listening to the poll winner because on Patreon we run a poll every week where my most ardent supporters get to choose which great cover I will listen to next. And this time the winner is Joni Mitchell. Well, Joni Mitchell is a name which has come up recommended many times over the course of my journey and I'm really thrilled to be ready to sit down and listen now. The piece chosen is Woodstock, and the reason for that is because on Patreon we also have a weekly live gathering where we get together and listen to music together, discuss, etc. And recently, just a week or two ago, uh, the topic was Woodstock, and I got to watch for the first time the video of Jimi Hendrix performing some of, doing some of his performance at Woodstock. I listened to four songs, three of which I have actually um, done my first listen to on this channel already, and the fourth was the national anthem. And it was quite an experience. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think everybody in that live meeting enjoyed it as well. And so now it seems that everybody wants to continue the theme because now they have chosen for me Woodstock by Joni Mitchell, and I'm eager to sit down and listen, first of all, because it's finally time for me to hear Joni Mitchell, and secondly, because I'm curious, now that I have um, experienced it by video, a bit of that Woodstock moment, I'm curious to see what her take on it is, because I understand that she wasn't there. So how does she view it? Let's find out. Joni Mitchell is a Canadian-American singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and painter. As one of the most influential singer-songwriters to emerge from the 1960s folk music circuit, Mitchell became known for her personal lyrics and unconventional compositions, which grew to incorporate pop and jazz elements. Joni received 11 Grammy Awards. She was awarded the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2002, and was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1997. Rolling Stone called her one of the greatest songwriters ever, and All Music has stated Joni Mitchell may stand as the most important and influential female recording artist of the late 20th century. Her 1971 album, Blue, is often cited as one of the greatest albums of all time. It was rated the third best album ever made in Rolling Stone's 2020 list of the 500 greatest albums of all time. And in 2000, the New York Times chose Blue as one of the 25 albums that represented turning points and pinnacles in 20th century popular music. NPR ranked Blue number one on a 2017 list of greatest albums made by women. Folk, jazz, pop, and rock are generally considered her genres. She is typically classified and thought of as a singer-songwriter in the company of artists such as Bob Dylan, Neil Young, Paul Simon, Carole King, James Taylor, Joan Baez, etc. Well, I know I've listened to Bob Dylan and Joan Baez. I don't know if I have listened. Did I do any Neil Young? No, I haven't. I don't think I have. Well, no. there are some more for you me to listen, listen to. You listened to Neil Young, Cortez the Killer, but you didn't listen to John Baez. Oh! I read about John Baez in some other one of the um, preliminary paragraphs to one of the songs. The name stuck in my mind. <laughs> I guess because somebody corrected me about her pronunciation on the channel. Someone said, Someone's, because I said John Baez, and they said, no, 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 that's not okay. You have to say John Baez. So, Joni Mitchell contracted polio at age nine and was hospitalized for weeks. Polio had weakened her left hand, so she devised alternative tunings to compensate. She later used these tunings to create non-standard approaches to harmony and structure in her songwriting. That's interesting because, you know, it's true, especially if you're playing guitar, or another stringed instrument that has specific intervals between strings, you have certain configurations that work with the hand shape and size. And so you fall into a kind of um, pattern, harmonic patterning and 
sequencing, not just harmonic, but also also uh, f figures, you know, accompaniment stuff figures and so forth. So if she's tuning alternatively to make it work with with her hand issues, naturally it's going to come up with something different and there will be other things that stand out and become accessible that might not otherwise. She had a brain aneurysm in 2015 that led to a long period of recovery and therapy. She completely lost her ability to play guitar, having to teach herself to play again by listening to some of her old albums. She initially lost her ability to sing, which she worked to recover through therapy. She returned to public appearances in 2021, accepting several awards in person, including a Kennedy, Kennedy Center honor. She returned to live performance with an unannounced show at the June 2022 Newport Folk Festival, and has made several other appearances since, including a headlining show in 2023. At 80 years old, she appeared on the 2024 Grammy Awards show performing her classic Both Sides Now, with her friend assisting her by playing the guitar. Well, she's had quite a life, hasn't she? 80 years old in 2024? That means she wasn't terribly young in 2015 when she had the brain aneurysm, which means not only is she recovering from the brain injury, but she's also not young to be learning, relearning, learning anew an instrument. Um, that's, some, that's some tenacity there. Really amazing. With Woodstock, we have a case when the cover was released slightly before the original, although Joni had performed it live first before the CSNY album was released. The lyrics tell a story about a spiritual journey to Max Yasgur's farm, the place of the festival, and makes prominent use of sacred imagery, comparing the festival site with the Garden of Eden. That's interesting. Joni plays on a Wurlitzer electric piano. Well, this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Let's see how it sounds. This uh, next song that I'm going to play is um, about one of these pop festivals that they've been having around the world lately. Um, it's one that I didn't really get to go to. Um, I'd been playing the night before in Chicago with a, a band, friends of mine, Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young, etc., etc. And uh, it was their first professional appearance and we were all kind of excited about it. And the next night we were supposed to all play in Woodstock and I had to do a TV show the next day, so I kind of got left behind because they were having problems getting people in and getting them back out again and everything. So I stayed home in New York and I watched it on television oh, all day. Okay, so she did get <laughs> to see it somehow, although singing. she wasn't and there in person. It was really a nice festival, I guess, and from the looks of everything. And Well, I wrote a little song for my friends to sing and, and uh, for myself to sing as well, and it's called Woodstock. It goes like this.
return to the land, back, return to the earth um, sentiment there with that reference to the Garden of Eden. I have come here to lose the smog, and I feel to be a cog in something turning. Well, and maybe it is the time of year, or maybe it's the time of man. along by the by the story that she's telling it's it's um I probably should have stopped a few times to share what I was thinking but but there's something so captivating about her about her presentation it's it's simple it's there's a sort of sweetness and innocence to it but something really draws me in and some of the things that I'm picking up on, well, of course, there's, I'm a bit too young to have been part of the hippie movement back then, but this gives me the feeling of all the hope and, and ideals that I understand were part of that movement, the idea that we return to the land, the place that we belong is in the natural form, in other words, back to Eden. And of course, the movement for peace, the the bombers turning into butterflies over the nation. And, and uh, there's also this feeling that well, as she said at the beginning, she wasn't able to be there because of her professional commitments. So she got, only got to watch it on, on television. I feel as though, in this song, I feel as though she was sad not to have been there. At the same time, she's not complaining about it, but there's this, there's this feeling of, Oh, if only I could have been there. And at the same time, there is this connection to it, which she, the way she talks about, we went, I'm going to camp out on the land. I'm going to join in a rock and roll band. Um, it's, it's very first person. I came upon a child of God. And then I asked him, where are you going? And he told me this, and this is, this is the story that he told her. But it's all in first person. I don't know who I am, but you know life is for learning. We are stardust, we are golden. 
little bit later, she said, um, um, we are stardust billion year old carbon. What, what a moment to kind of add a bit of science to this idea of stardust, right? We are stardust, but let's get concrete and scientific about it. Billion year old carbon. That's who, that's what we are. And, uh, we are golden caught in the devil's bargain. We've got to get ourselves back to the garden. This idea that we have taken a wrong turn as society, as, as human beings, and we need to readjust and put ourselves back on track. There's all of that coming through in this very sweet, light, um, shall I say, stardusted piece of music. There's, there's something shimmery about it. Well, of course, it's the accompaniment pattern. Well, let me finish listening to the rest of it because I'm not far from the end. And then, then I'll talk a bit more. Back to the but there's a warmth to it. Right, this sort of jazzy style that we heard in the opening. sound that is and and um so what i was going to say about the music is that yes it has this sort of shimmering rippling silvery quality to it and part of it has to do with the um accompaniment pattern that she's playing there's this rippling ya da di 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 in the left hand and the right hand also has the same sort of um flowing accompaniment, which is fairly common for piano style accompanying of melodies and harp style. And um, while I'm looking at this thinking, could I pull this off on the harp without a lot of remaking of it? I'd have to remake it because one of the things, differences between harp and piano or guitar, all those instruments they have so much in common. They're all harmony instruments, but each one, speaking of hand configurations, each one has a very unique um, set of possibilities that are idiomatic to the instrument. And on the piano, you have five fingers in each hand available to you. On the guitar, you have some wide intervals available to you in a small space. On the harp, neither of those are quite so available. There are other things that are beautifully available, and one of them that does translate would be this, um, I guess we're in the key of E minor, aren't we? Is this sort of pattern. You can see I just put this string on here. It's still settling in. do for now. Well, there's some other strings that are out too. We've had rain, we've got some broken strings. I'll do it down here. Or maybe I'll do it up here. This that we heard in her left hand, it works well on the harp as well. really use the third much. That's one of the things I noticed is that she tended 
to avoid the third. She went more for fourths and fifths. Um, in this intro here, we have we have an A. All fourths. And then she did move to thirds the next time it came around. But then we ended on a fourth. And then of course she went into the little jazzy triplet thing. Mm. Can't quite get the flat at the same time. So you see, there are there's some challenges with with translating this directly to the harp that means I can't just sit down and play it off the sheet music instantly. But at the same time, as I'm listening to her play at the piano, I'm thinking, oh, that would be lovely remade for the harp. And it wouldn't take that much work. It would just take some time to sit down and figure out which ones can I reach? This D to D flat, how should I substitute that? And a few other little tweaks. And then it would be ready to go. Then I would need a voice like Joni Mitchell, wouldn't I? <laughs> but it's lovely. and. And uh, I, I'm curious to see, I would love to hear, and I guess I will be hearing, some more of her performances, some more of her music, because I do enjoy the lightness and the clarity of her voice. It's not weak, it's not surfacy, but there's something very, almost ethereal quality about it that is special and she handles it well she writes well for it and and um, it it's special back to the message of this song I I like the quality of hopefulness that she brings to her music um, when she says talks about all the things I, I feel to be a cog in something turning Maybe it's just the time of year, or maybe it's the time of man. I don't know who I am. But she's always bringing it back to a positive spin. But you know life is for learning. And then, of course, this idea that we are stardust. We've been here a million years, and, and it's not like we're just going to vanish instantly. We have time. Life is for learning and we've managed to survive this long. Surely if we stay open and attentive and sensitive um, and understand that we are golden and we know where we need to go. We need to get ourselves back to and then this idea of this is a movement that is growing. By the time we got to Woodstock, we were half a million strong. And I have dreams of hopefulness. I dream. Everywhere there was song and celebration, but I, I even dreamed that I saw the bombers turning into butterflies. Kind of like swords into plowshares, right? But even a little bit more... Even a little bit more... Sparkly, stardusty, um, ethereal... Uh, this... this perfect Edenic fantasy world that that we could achieve if we just reach out and take it and take ourselves there. That's the kind of hopefulness and, and quality that I gather from this. And it's very sweet and comforting in a way, right? Of course, we all recognize that things aren't quite so easy. Bombers, unfortunately, they don't turn into butterflies overhead. <laughs> Wouldn't it be lovely if they did? But still, especially knowing a bit of Joni Mitchell's life story, I can't help but be believe that this quality of hopefulness and always turning things in a positive way, regardless of how terrifying they are, is one of the things that made it possible for her to, not only at the beginning, okay, 
You had polio as a child. You have some problems with your hand. Okay, we'll we'll retune. We'll find a way to make it work. That's that's impressive, but a lot of people have done something, overcome some childhood um, or early life tragedy, difficulty. But then, to be in your 70s and have a brain aneurysm and forget how to do the thing your life was made of, music, be unable to play guitar, can't sing, how? How? And at that age, to pick it up again and teach yourself to do it all over again. Not only that, to then go back out in public with this. There is something more than just fantastical dreams. There is a deep-seated conviction that life is for living and we have reason to hope. And that's the thing, I think, that makes this piece of music enjoyable to me. Because I'm not the type to just sit down and listen to, uh, you know, dream world, dream all your starry-eyed dreams and, and pretend that everything's okay. That's not me, and I think that's not a lot of us. Yes, we like to escape reality from time to time, but we all r recognize that reality is the thing that we have to face and deal with. And here, here in this song, there is this depth to it. This is the reality we live. And yet there's reason to hope and there is reason to dream. I've mentioned it before, but it's one of my favorite little poems and I guess I'll mention it again. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in your soul. And this is kind of along those same lines. What a lovely first experience with Joni Mitchell. Thank you to all my patrons who chose it for me. And I'm excited to see what comes next. I'll see you soon. <laughs>